This is my story here on Church of Uganda Family TV. Welcome back from the break. Uh, we are with Reverend Grace Joram Kavuma, who is the assistant vicar of uh, Matters Church Namgongo here at the Anglican site. We are privileged to have and to listen to his story, uh, especially if you're just joining us. He says he was given a title in primary as reverend, but his only role was to pray for food. <laughs> well, a reverend now, uh, senior six is done at Goodo Secondary School. What next for you as a person? And uh, we shall see whether this prophecy of reverend <laughs> and how it comes to pass. <laughs> Um, one thing that I remember was uh, that even if I was um, a reverend in uh, primary, primary school, mm. while I was at, at Budo Secondary School uh, in church, my responsibility was to speak. I was a speaker in church, the church committee. So I left with that uh, responsibility as I concluded also. Mm. Um, uh, then while I was, uh, after secondary school, mm. primary six, uh, sorry, secondary, senior six, mm. I went to Makere University Business School mm. and did uh, my degree in procurement and supply chain management um, for for three years mm. up to 2014. Mm. Um, after that, uh, what, because by that time, um, at the moment, uh, His Grace, Dr. Stephen Kazimba was the Bishop of Mintiana Diocese. Mm. He used to see my um, involvement in ministry. Mm. I used to play the drums in church. Mm. I used to love uh, doing ministry among the youth. Mm. So there was an opportunity to do ministry, uh, to study ministry, uh, theology. But then um, after my degree in procurement supply chain management, I remember it was just two weeks within the holiday. Um, then I received a phone call. I remember it clearly. It was around 3 p.m. Mm. He, um, His Grace called me. He was in office. And he told me, he asked me whether I was home. Uh, I was like, yes, because home was very close to church. Mm. And then he told me, please come in my office. I want to see you in the next 10, 15 minutes. Mm. I was scared because I was, I, I was, <laughs> I didn't know, you know, a bishop calling <laughs> you uh, and, uh, on such short notice mm. without, uh, without any prayer uh, arrangement yes. that you had wanted to meet with mm. him. So I went and I quickly showered and went and met him in office. Mm. But this is something that I really thank God about um, His Grace, Dr. Mm. Stephen. Um, wh whenever he would easily notice that you're scared mm. and he would make sure that he creates the environment such that whatever he wants to speak to you, he will get a response that is um, grounded on or on a foundation of freedom mm. like you're not scared you're mm. not on tension as you're responding mm. so i meet with him in his office we were there together mm. alone before uh, any other person came in so he uh, he called me uh, um actually this is one thing that i used to brag about even in my family i used to introduce yeah. myself as i'm grace durham of mother friend of bishop Stephen. <laughs> i used to be proud of that uh, so he he called me he was seated um, at his desk and then uh, he he just removed the tab his tab and then he scrolled through the pictures of his son um, um, who was in South Africa. He, he scrolled through, scrolled through and say, he, he just showed me quite a number of pictures mm. uh, about uh, his son who was in South Africa mm. before he mentioned anything. Mm. So after about 20 minutes, then he says, um, you know what, um, there is this opportunity uh, for, to study theology in South Africa. Mm. Um, I've seen you as a person who um, who loves the Lord. I've seen you as a person who uh, loves ministry, um, a person who is not easily distracted when it comes to serving the Lord. And I think um, having your um, parents also in ministry, um, you would consider going to study theology. And then one of the questions that I was having in mind, I believe he also knew that I was having that question, that I, had fin I just finished my degree in procurement yes. i've not yet practiced mm. and remember there are the, the other people that enter into ministry they sometimes come after having got involved in other mm. activities mm. you first work practice mm. and get first gather all these things that mm. would you would not easily gather mm. as a clergyman mm. and then later go into 
a ministry. Mm. And um, some people also had uh, the, the, the mindset that sometimes ministry uh, is went into as a as the last option after you have finished all the other things. So I think he knew that now as he was introducing this idea for me to be enter into ministry, I was having all those thoughts come into my mind. So he quickly responded to that and he was like, now I know you might be thinking of the fact that now I'm young, I've just finished <laughs> procurement, how am I going to quickly enter into ministry? Yeah. What is it going to be like? Mm. I do not have um, anything on my side. I'm not yet married because mm. by then I wasn't yet married. Mm. But this is what I want you to know. Mm referred me to Jeremiah, referred me to Moses, uh, he referred me to Timothy, he was like, God calls us differently. Mm. You do not have to first go into something else and enter into ministry. Because mm. remember, I told you my dad was yes. first of all a businessman and then he enters yes. into ministry. My grandfather was first of all a teacher mm. uh, and then he entered into ministry. ministry. So he was like, you, you're not supposed to be like uh, other people to enter into ministry. God calls us differently and he has different intentions for all of us. Mm. So. As long as you just trust in him, mm. he will enable you. He has called you for his own purpose. And you're not going to do ministry for, for the sake of your father or grandfather. Mm. For the sake of your friends, you're going to do ministry as grace. Mm. So, um, this opportunity is there. Um, uh, the, the, you're supposed to start next year. By then it was May. Mm. You're supposed to start next year. Remember, I've not yet even graduated. Yeah. You, yeah, no. I was supposed to, you're supposed to start next year, and I'm giving you 24 hours to think about that and come back with a response. Let me let us pray. So, <laughs> so uh, we prayed, and then, but I was, I was, I had mixed feelings, excited, mm. but yet a little bit confused. How is this going to be? Mm. Uh, you know. So I had all these plans, you know, procurement by that time. It was a course that had just been introduced. I mm. practiced at all. Mm. But yet within my mind, within my heart, I was like, I wanted to do everything for Jesus Christ. Even mm. entering into procurement, I wanted to do business in Jesus Christ. Mm. That is why you see the reason as to why we, uh, we linked up so much. We, I, I really loved, um, I actually entered the ministry very fast because of the way I used to do, to mm, see mm. Archbishop Stephen do ministry. Mm. Because he actually spoke into very many um, aspects that I had in my mind. Mm. He used to talk, even up to today, he still speaks about business evangelism. Mm, so yeah. I realized that his language was not so far from what I had uh, in mind. He was humble, um, he, he was creative, mm. and those are some, he was spot on on the gospel you know mm. whenever it went to music to, to to development he was there when it came to the pulpit he was there mm. so i was like who wouldn't like to enter ministry at a time like this when you can be discipled by a man of god like this mm. so i enter into um ministry when by the time i went as i was walking from home it is just a short distance from church to home. Mm. But trust me, the thoughts that I was having are equivalent to the thoughts that you can have as you're traveling from here to Guru. Just that short period of time. Because a lot was going through my mind. Uh. But because this was a full scholarship, okay, it was also an advantage. Because mm. my parents now did not have to worry about paying for yes. my school, uh, my, my yes. tuition and stuff. Mm. So when I went, I discussed this with my parents and they're like, okay, do you feel cold? I was like, yeah. So. We went. Uh, we, I went back the following day, and I told him I accept. So he put me on board. He gave me all the information, uh, the, the application forms, and then I applied and went to uh, George Whitfield College in mm. South Africa, where I spent four years from 2015 mm. uh, to 2018. 18. Yes. After you come back. Yes. Now we get to. You, 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 you've now trained in theology and you're back. Mm. How does your ministry start now, uh, clerical mm. ministry? <laughs> when I was at GWC, mm. there is one thing that um, always came to mind. That I saw that, it, that whatever we see in Scripture, you know when you see quite a lot of compromise going on mm. uh, in life, among some church members, mm. among some leaders, you might think that the promises of God that are written in Scripture are not real. True. When you see someone speaking like well that i know what it means to lack i know what it means mm. to have in plenty but mm. in all situations i praise god when you see a person who pours out his life like stephen poured out his life yes. and he was nailed until death you think these things are not real mm. but this is a moment when i had to spend time with the word of god while at, at college mm. we studied the word of god and i i grew into 
uh, the knowledge and love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there was only one thing that I always had in my heart, and as a prayer, that God, how I pray that when I go back home, I'll have an opportunity and get a platform mm. that is on top that I can actually share this good news that I've got while at GWC, this knowledge mm. that I've got at George Whitfield College with my brothers and sisters. Mm. So when I came back to GW, to, to Uganda, Uganda, God actually responded to that prayer. Mm. Because when I completed uh, and came back to Mitiana, I was ordained by still His Grace, still yes. then, um, Bishop, Bishop. Bishop Stephen, yeah. Mm. He ordained me. And just a year, because 2018, and then the following year, he's elected to mm. be Archbishop. Archbishop. So he goes to um, the province. Mm. When he goes to the province, um, I, I was uh, um, heading, um, coordinating a discipleship program during that time. Mm. And I saw an opportunity during that time, actually, to go with him at the provincial secretariat. Because while I was still in Michiana, I was coordinating this program mm. um, in different areas, but from a diocese. Yes. But you know what it means to coordinate a program from a provincial level? Mm. You actually get acceptance easily yes. in other dioceses. Mm. So that's what happened. God responded to pr a prayer that I had while at, 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 at GWC mm. that now I was at the provincial secretariat um, doing ministry, reaching out to sister, uh, sisters and brothers, sharing the gospel, preaching the truth mm. while at, uh, at, the, uh, at, the at the province. Mm. Yeah. So even during that time, um, I realized that I was at, just at the secretariat. Yeah. I needed an opportunity to have a church. So mm. I spoke to him. We also prayed about it. His grace, we prayed about mm. it. Then we um, um, approached, um, by now retired, mm. Bishop Urbapos, um, mm. Bishop of Namirembe Diocese. Yes. And he accepted to um, bring me on board. Uh, that is how I actually um, end up being here mm. uh, at Namu. Na, na, Namgongo Matas Church. Mm. So that's how uh, that came from GWC mm. back to Mitiana into ordination, mm. then at the provincial secretariat, then to Namgongo. Yeah, to Namgongo Matas Church. Okay. Yes. This is this is so interesting. Now uh, there is some story we cannot uh, leave out. Mm. Uh, as we are starting this show, you said you're married. Mm. <laughs> now we want to get to the marriage uh -huh. a bit. Yeah. How do you meet her, Mrs. Kavman? I met uh, Agnes. Mm. Uh, I was I was still I, I was I think in my second year when I was doing procurement mm -hmm. supply chain management at Moobs. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing that I that was so special about her. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you've watched Nigerian movies. There are some things yes. that we watch in Nigerian movies and they seem so unreal. Like yeah, true. you see this girl, this church girl who mm. is so committed to ministry. Mm. Mm. Uh, she's, she's so real. Like she was a mama at, she was by, by then an, um, an, um, Michiana secondary school and mm. she was a mama. She used to come uh, at church, at uh, the cathedral and she used to pick any dirty thing around. It was not really, it was not easily um, acceptable for a girl who was in, uh, was uh, at A level to come and do the cleaning. Mm. And then I remember one thing that also stood out. You know, when a girl gets to a level, mm. they no longer they, they they speak English. They no longer yes, want her to, yes. to kneel down and uh. stuff. If you don't, if you don't, if a girl doesn't want to kneel down, they use English. Yeah. You know. So, but I remember one time we were with uh, the chaplain um, by then, um, Reverend Kabanda Kenneth Kabanda. Mm. He's a very good friend of mine. Mm. As we were standing uh, just after the service outside of the cathedral. Mm. Uh, Magnus comes and she kneels down while kneel, while greeting um, Reverend Kavanda. I was like, sure, this girl, she's uh, she, she's a one in a million. A, yeah, she has a <laughs> lot of uh, humility. Mm. And for me, I was first of all drawn to her godliness. Mm. And by then, actually, what I, I had in mind, I wasn't yet sure, but I had something within me mm. that I wanted to do ministry mm. so i wanted to do i wanted to get someone who would actually enable me to do ministry mm. i first of all loved her godliness mm. i loved her humility mm. and that drew me um into uh, her heart so i spoke to her um uh, we of course one of the things that i start, first started to do was i was a very good friend Mm -hmm. A very good prayer partner. Mm -hmm. I used every time she came to pr for practice. I used to call her. We, we had to pray. We had to pray. We prayed and prayed. So, what was it intentional? Because you wanted to get her eventually, or it, I think it, it was just a coincidence. Within me, it mm. was a strategy. 
Okay. Yeah, it was already a strategy <laughs> that I wanted, but I wanted also for her to understand that I'm. I, I want her, mm. but I want her to see my heart also. Yes. She's falling into love mm. with a person who loves the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. I did not want to um, fall in love with her like a sharpshooter. Mm, uh-uh. mm, mm. I want. I, I wanted her to know that she's falling in love with. Mm. A, 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 a person who loves the Lord Jesus Christ, a mm. person who loves ministry. Mm. So I brought her into that way. She first of all thought, for her, she thought it, this was just a, uh, a loving brother, mm. a caring brother mm. who was only keen for ministry and stuff. <laughs> but Go for me, there. I was intentionally uh, <laughs> making sure that we are getting into that journey. Okay. And it wasn't an, a short journey because mm. it was a journey of seven years of courtship, oh. and there were struggles in there. Uh, I, I remember we broke up around three times within that journey. Mm-hmm. But the, if there was one thing that I did, as we were starting this relationship, I told her to speak to her mom. Mm-hmm. Such that it created a sense of accountability within yes. my heart. Because yes. every time that uh, challenges came, I, 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 something came to my mind. Mm-hmm. Her mom knows. Mm. My parents know. Mm. So, it, because even up to today, still challenges come, and uh, very many people who are married face challenges, mm. they face struggles. Mm. But because of the commitment, because of the covenant, because of the understanding for what you have entered into, you're able to overlook yes. the challenges that go, uh, that come um, your way. Mm. So, we went through this journey of um, seven, years, seven years, and then in 2019. Um, even after ordination, I remember um, still um, His Grace, mm. still Bishop then, as he was um, ordaining me, he ordained me, but then he also prayed for my future wife. Mm. And then when I was seated, you know, we, we sit uh, on, on, we sat on long queues, 3-3 mm. mm. three, three, um, clergy. Mm. So 3-3 three, three clergy, but in, in a couple. Mm. But I remember uh, His Grace said, you're supposed to leave Grace's wife, the, the, the wife of Grace, the seat you're supposed to leave it there so in church on the door of ordination it was only my pew that had two couples with me but a space left there <laughs> as a prophecy because he had a lot of faith and he loved me so much mm. and he actually before completing my um procurement mm. many times he usually called me and um, uh, while at, uh, at college uh, at, at, at the university and he was he used to call me reverend grace reverend mm. grace because he wanted that to be uh, mm. within me so that's the same thing that i communicated through to agnes mm. uh, that I, I i love you but i actually want you to know that in the future mm. there is ministry mm. yeah and thankfully she has never diverted from that from mm. day one uh, she has always known that she will be Mama Musumba, mm. uh, and she, she's, she's a lovely one. <laughs> okay. By the grace of God, we have also got a daughter, and mm. God has blessed us so much. Amen, mm. amen, amen. Now, uh, having grown up from uh, from a family of a clergy with mm. all the struggles, mm. dad is a bishop, but life was really unpleasant. Mm. And when we get back to those days, uh, a few people mm. who really wanted to go. It took God, mm. <laughs> but a yeah. few people really mm. sat back and admired to be <laughs> clients yes. because of probably I think uh, it had been limited mm. to the financial constraints mm. and uh, all that. So you uh, making up your mind to go and be a clergy mm. was it something that came uh, besides putting uh, putting the calling aside? Yes. Yes. Uh, did you did you think about this life after? Becoming a clergy and uh, following the same constraints, the same struggles financially that you're going to go through, all that wasn't really part of your thinking. Mm, my, my my main interest actually mm. in joining ministry mm. mainly was for the word. Okay. Um, God had always placed it on to my heart that I was quite analytical. I was I, I used to observe. Mm. I used to listen really well. Mm. And there are quite a number of uh, preachers of God's word. We used to preach the word, but in my heart I was like, I don't know how to do it, but I don't think that is right. Mm. I don't know how to make inst- this interpretation, but I don't think that interpretation is right. Mm. And I only had a prayer that God, would you please enable me? to understand the word in the way that you want it to be understood. That's why I thank God for the opportunity of George Whitfield College mm, mm, because mm. they do not teach tradition, they do not teach any other thing but the word. Mm. 
the word. The, their experience is that with experience you can learn. We mm. learn experience wherever we yes. go. But there is something that you may not be able to learn in out there in yes, ministry. But true. the word mm. and how to um I, w w when 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 Paul said I, I, that I, I want to know Jesus Christ mm. and the power of His resurrection, mm. it is a huge huge statement. Mm. How do we know him? Because very many people, the way that you see he, them live today, represent Jesus Christ, be in church, lead us, but then they do not behave the way they are supposed to behave. Yes. It is because they do not know what they believe. Mm. It is because they do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. And that is one thing for me I had in mind. Mm. The, advert, the, the one thing that I thank God about was that I had seen all these struggles as I was going. Yes. But I was also able to see that they did not defeat us. They did mm, not consume mm, us. Mm, 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 so that was a foundation that God um, gave to me that, yes, the struggles might be there. And of course they are there, mm. but they do not consume us. Yes. Um, we look at a greater glory. Mm. We look at a, uh, at a greater life, a better yes. life. Yes. Um, yes. It does not mean, because very many people think that when we speak like that as ministers of God's word, that we undermine our responsibility on earth here. Mm. That we undermine our responsibility as men that are called to work until uh, this land. Mm. But what we are trying to say is, much as you work and toil and look forward to make this world a better place, mm. but you should remember that there is a life after this. Mm. So for me, that was in my heart, okay. that even if the struggles are mm. here, there is a life. Amen. As we draw closer to the conclusion, um, besides uh, your ministry or work, besides uh, uh, ministry on the pulpit, what else occupies you? Because you said, uh, Bishop, uh, you're the grandfather. Mm. I'd say you're the one who, to, who took his talent. Have you ever uh, practiced his talent? I mean, <laughs> of singing. I sing, but I sing in church. Because <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't like to grow any other kingdom but the kingdom of God. Mm. So I sing in church, I play uh, keyboard in church, I mm. do instruments in church. Mm. So in any other life um, that, I, that, that I live, mm. um, of course, as ministers um, mm. of God's word, God gives you stewardship um, mm. to different people. Yes. So you, 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 you give counsel to other people, mm. you become a mentor to other people, mm. and God provides you through all those aspects. Because that question sometimes comes with an intention of maybe wanting to know, is there any other income generating project? No, I mean, I mean, hobbies are like, uh, hobbies. you could say maybe swimming or, or things like that. I fear <laughs> water, my friend. I don't know how to swim. <laughs> I don't know how to <laughs> I don't know how to swim. Yeah, at least I can fly, but I don't know how to swim, okay. and I don't like to swim. Yeah, but this is one thing that um, yes. that I, I wouldn't like us to finish without yes. um, talking about. Mm. Uh, there are very many. Um, one of the things that uh, was spoken about mm. in a wrong way mm. uh, was that many children of clergy um, do not end up doing clergy work. Yes, um, and it was it was rampant because some of the people that um, uh, have fathered. I remember there was a clergy that I saw and they never got a promotion just because of the wrong behavior of their children. Mm. This is my encouragement that I want to give yes. to my uh, yes. fellow kids, uh, the, my fellow uh, PKs, mm. uh, pastor's kids mm. out there. It is, y y you're not supposed to be limited to ministry just because your parent is a clergy. Mm. Um, I am here 34 years old, but if you see my journey right from baby class, the Lord has enabled me. Jesus has enabled me to love him and grow spiritually um, into him. Therefore, as we are doing ministry, we should understand that much as you might be young, you can serve the Lord. Much as you might be um, having a profession, because I told you I did procurement, supply yes, chain management, yeah. but I'm also in ministry. Mm. His Grace talks about business evangelism, yes. uh, incorporating professionalism into, into ministry. Yes. Um, gone are the days when the church uh, did not recognize our professions as yes. doctors, as engineers, mm. as mm. procurement officers. The church wants um, you to be a clergy, but it also wants you to come with your profession. Mm. Look at the way the Lord Jesus Christ called upon the disciples. Mm. You had a profession and also you were called to do ministry. Mm. So I want to encourage and really pray for our generation yes. that God will actually enable you to understand that you can serve him mm. even if you have a different profession. Mm. Do not undermine in the same way that uh, Paul spoke to Timothy. Mm. Do not let them undermine you because you're young. But set an example in the way that you speak, in the way that you have faith in the Lord, in the way that you conduct yourself. 
And who cannot do that? You can do that in the way that God has called you as long as you accept him as Jesus Christ, as, uh, as personal Lord and Savior. This generation is not looking for best engineers, best <clears throat> doctors. Best, it's yes. looking for committed Christians who can make best engineers, yeah. best doctors, best politicians, yeah. best professions. Mm. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to do, mm. to remember our initial call, mm. that you are created in the image of God, that are for serve him in the way that he has called you. Thank you so mm. much, Reverend. I think we cannot go beyond uh, this point, but we are grateful uh, for this insight, for this um, message. I believe it is a powerful message, especially to the young people out there who have uh, our generation, who probably fear ministry now. Uh, they still have a lot of questions. I believe you've given them an answer. Thank you so much for that. And thank you so much uh, to you. Of you. I believe you've learned something out of this. And because we don't bring uh, these people, uh, just have the conversations and go away. In the end, mm. our intention is that you pick out something even if you pick out a message just one like this one statement it can change your life mm -hmm. uh, I, I have a changed mind and i believe you to have a changed mind especially from reverend kavma's story thank you so much may the almighty god bless you now um and today we are doing it differently. I'm signing out and then Reverend will give us a prayer afterwards. <laughs> I've worked with Brinko, Ategeka, Linda Dina uh, on, on camera and uh, a number of people out there. Edwin Austin Mkalazi is my name. Now Reverend is going to give us a prayer. Uh, so humble yourselves. <laughs> and let us pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you so much because you're loving. We thank you mm. so much because you're caring. We thank you so much. For the many blessings that we have in your son jesus christ thank you for family tv and the ministry that is being done through them thank you for all the facilitation lord that you're giving to them father we thank you for the gospel that is going out through this media and now i thank you lord for this and um, opportunity that you've given to us to share something about uh, my story it is you lord jesus that has made me who i am today so i pray that you will make many more people out there to live for the lord jesus christ i pray for my country lord i pray for all the ministers i pray for all the parliamentarians i pray for the army officers i pray for those in the judiciary i pray for our president lord would you be with him together with his family king of glory i pray that you will continue to keep your charge be with his grace all the bishops all the clergy all the lay readers all the congregants lord may we see your goodness and love bind us together with chains of love that cannot be broken by the enemy enable us to reach you where you want to be reached so i pray now that may your peace that surpasses all human understanding continue to keep the hearts and minds of your children that they will forever grow in the knowledge of god and in the love of the lord jesus christ and may the blessing of god almighty the father son and holy spirit may that blessing be upon you child of god may that blessing never leave you or is remain from now until eternity amen